What's going on today, everybody? I hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I am. We're back working on the jet ski. Yet another day of it. I'm sorry, there's going to be quite a few, but we got to get this done. We're going to go ahead, now that we got the decking all sealed up, all that foam sealed up, we did some uh, epoxy, got it all filled in, sealed up, hit it with some flex seal, and now it's time to go ahead and get these matting done. So set the floor to the walls, make the walls rigid, because right now the walls are pretty flimsy. So we got some chop mat in there. It's literally just chopped up little chunks of fiberglass that are all put um, randomly in there. Super, super strong with not a lot of weight. So we go ahead, I'm going to go ahead, put a layer of chop mat in there, and then I'm gonna finish it off with this really, really thick 20 ounce weave. This is a bilateral weave. Um, and that will give us the thickness without having to do a bunch of um, layers, and it will just be a lot easier to get in there um, with it really, really thick. So I got a thin layer in there to get going. I'm waiting for it to get tacky. I've gone ahead and put my first layer of chop mat in. I just did over the foam pretty much. So just an inch or two over the existing and then up the sidewall of the existing. Um, yeah. If you're trying to do the flex seal stuff like me, don't make the mistake of putting it too high up the walls because that stuff is so annoying to take off. I cannot believe how long, it took me like three hours just to remove the flex seal to get to where I can actually work on it again. I didn't get it perfect. Kind of wish I hadn't done it. So honestly, if I was gonna do this again, I wouldn't flex seal anything. I just do epoxies and just let it be. I do the polyurethane and the foam and make sure it's all sealed up on the inside, but the flex seal, not, not my proudest moment. But we made our bed, it's time to lay in it. Now, let's go ahead, finish this. Let's get these fiberglass pieces put in and I've got them already kind of mocked up how I want them. They're not gonna be perfect squares. It's just gonna be the big chunk. The idea is to get a big chunk in there so you have strength going all the way across it. So the bigger the chunk, the, the stronger it's gonna be. A bunch of little chunks are, are harder to kind of make strong other than the chop mat. The chop mat makes it really strong, but it's a mat. It's already kind of in there. So the best you can do to actually keep that one big chunk, the stronger it's gonna be. You have those strands running a long ways to make sure everything's nice and strong. So let's go ahead, let's get to this. I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes to tack up. I want it to be really, really sticky because I want that mat to sit. It's so thick, I want it to stick because it'll want to just pull off, naturally want to go flat. So let's go ahead, give it a minute, Wait for, it, wait for it to get real tacky, and then we'll go ahead, put that matting on, and glass it all up. So here we got our first chop mat in. I still have some work to do. It's got some air bubbles in it, but I'm just letting it tack up so it'll actually stick down. This side turned out a lot better. This is the second one we did, but just glass from here up to the corner, just around that corner to give a little bit of rigidity because this thing right now flexes a lot and we don't want this side to flex. Now it will get stronger the more stuff we're putting in here, we're putting a railing system and then we're putting way more fiberglass in than this and it's it's already doing a lot better because right here now is going to be our failure point. If this cracks, it's gonna wanna rip this whole thing off right on this corner. So we definitely wanna make sure this back side's really nice and structurally sound. So here we go, here's my pieces. This is the, this will be the front of the ski. This one goes in the footwell, so it's just cut to go around this um, piece that's sticking out. So that can slide in. This will go up, up in here, and then the other stuff will just kind of go around up the side wall. Now, I put a 
cut in here because that's a 90 it just needs to attach there not bunch up because this stuff does not want to bunch very well it's it folds but it doesn't bunch definitely is thicker stuff but then the back side we've gone ahead and put in um, a little bit of a chamfer that sticks out and that's to accommodate this bump out but also come up the wall here probably will need to put a cut or a slit in this coming down but i'm gonna try to do it as one without putting that slit in because this is just gonna fray out on me more and not want to stick together they're will come apart pretty easily a huge tip to everybody if you're doing fiberglass and you're doing big pieces and you don't have a place to really wet it out if you go ahead get a, pe a garbage bag tape it to something flat you can go ahead pour a bunch of resin on this get it really soaked into those fibers flip it over soak it in the other side that way you know you've got resin coverage on everything when you put it on then you don't have to go through and dab it as much and pray that it comes through the material what you're doing then is you're dabbing it and then pulling it completely out of the material so now we're going to go ahead and mix up a good batch of resin get this soaking let this start tacking up while this starts tacking up and then when they touch each other the goal is to get them to stick so it's going to be more of the bond i only get one real shot at putting it on but I'll take that shot because I need it to actually stick to something so let's go ahead get to this fiberglass full of resin and then we'll get it sitting in here we know we're tacky enough on the inside we'll take the back of our finger and just touch it and if it comes off it's not tacky enough yet if it stays if the resin stays on there and doesn't get on the glove then we know it's starting to get tacky enough so let's go ahead wet this out and get some resin on it. Well, I tried to rush things last night and did things not the proper way. Tried to fiberglass over to gel coat because I forgot to prep this and I wanted it to be have some structure coming down and it didn't stick. So right here is a giant bubble. You can kind of see this part's moving. So there's nothing actually connecting. I can even just pull it off. There's nothing connecting these on and it would not stick on. So do the prep work before you need to because it will not stick. This stuff is stuck on there good, but I went and got cheeky, tried to tried to pull a fast one and it's biting me in the butt. So now I get to take it all off and redo it, but I'll just redo it when I do the foam. I'll just put some strips in that way and then it should be all good to go reseal all this back deck i do want to build this out my fiberglass i still need this for prep so i've got lots of stuff to do still but that was not okay i was in the middle of battle and chose the wrong the wrong tactic to try to get this to work because it's not it's it's not even sticking down you can see there's a big old gap right there where this thick stuff really wants to stay straight it was not wanting to go to how I needed it to go. So uh, we get to undo that along with the tops right here. The every other weave wants to stick out, which is not gonna be good when we do our next layer. So I'll grind all these flat, get those flat. Same with this side, did the same thing. All those extra little tangs are sticking up, not how I want it to. 
So we got a little work to do. I still want to put my final course on, but we got some work to do. Got everything sanded down semi-smooth. Got the resin on there. Now let's go ahead, wet this big piece out that we've got, get this finished. That way you've got the most amount of um, 